Hi everyone, I'm Glenn Flaherty from Board Games and Bourbon. Right now I'm going to talk to you about Sojourn, which is a new solo game where you're going through space and time trying to find four pieces of the time sphere so you can reassemble them and get back to your home time in 2020. The game itself is pretty fast, uh, it plays in about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, it's, a, it's a good time, it, you're not going to struggle through it. It is a cross between Chrononauts and... For some reason, it has the gameplay feel to me of Oniram. So the best way to do it is for me to play it and talk about it at the same time and give you my thoughts. Okay, so this is going to be a setup and a discussion about uh, Sojourn as we go through the play. Now, when we do it, we're going to get a bunch of these time stream cards, and then we're actually going to have our destinations as well. Now, what are the what do we do in the game? What are we trying to do? We're trying to get through all these different times and locations. And basically what happens is when we look at these cards... These are location cards, you know, and they're events in history. So this is Hiroshima's attack. There's also a date on it. The date will come into play because you have historical events, uh, Russian Revolution. The dates come into play because there are cards in the game that let you go between um, the future and the past. Uh, other cards only let you move through the timeline itself. And I'll explain that in a second. This is an example of a time fragment. If you pull a time fragment, you simply put a time period on top of it and if you survive this you get that okay that's how the game works now again you're trying to get four of those time fragment cards now when you do this you're also going to start your game with a bunch of time stream cards now what do these have well they have things like you can spend uh, your currency in the game to move around this little card over here tracks your currency this is your health tracker this is your temporal charge tracker and you spend one of these to move through time every time you get a time fragment you get one of these uh, green cubes again this is the prototype I love it because it kind of looks to me like it is a uh, <laughs> like a lean cuisine meal with all the chopped up veggies. You know, you can't beat that. So, okay. Um, so, we're looking here with Trumple Charge. If you get a Temporal Charge card, what that's going to let you do is it's going to let you uh, get another white cube back. Bandage uh, handles your damage. A Paradox will let you move forward a card without paying some of its cost. Um, a Loop lets you go back time-wise to any card that's on the board. Fracture lets you open up a new destination for free. There's two ways to open destinations in the game, which is just you either you know pay one cube or you play a card. It's not a big deal. And that's really all it is, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to get these cards. You're going to shuffle them up here. That's what I'm doing off camera. You're going to give yourself five of these. So let's see what happens. Now, one, two, three, four, five. All right. So what we got there? We have some uh, fracturing. We got some temporal stuff. Actually, got a pretty good assortment. Actually, got one of every card. That's amazing. All right, fantastic. Okay, now we got to start moving through time. So how does that work? Well, what you're gonna do is when you start here in the Jurassic period, the first thing you do. Oh, look at that! I pulled a uh, time fragment. All right. Well, that was the first card. Sometimes that'll happen. The first place you go will have a time fragment in it. So. When you go to the Jurassic, you open up your first time period. And so in this case, our first time period is the Crusades, and it's in 1096 AD. That might come into effect if I want a time loop, but let's talk about what's on the cards. Drop means if I want to go here, I have to get rid of one of the cards in my hand. It'll then cost me one of my cubes, my charge cubes. Once I actually travel to here, something cool happens, and then I have to roll for damage, and my reward, succeed or not, is that I get the gain. So let's you know travel here one of two ways, right? If I want to go here and not pay anything, I would play my Paradox card. Paradox card says I can travel to the destination for no losing of the card, which is called a time stream drop. These are called time stream cards. And I do not have to pay a temporal charge, which are my white cubes. I would simply move right here. Now, when I move to a new card and I'm successfully there, that automatically opens up a new card. Good golly, Miss Molly, it's another uh, time fragment. And you'll notice that I'm kind of, oh, wow. Now, in my variation of the game, I never allow myself to get two uh, time fragments in the same location. And you'll notice I'm kind of staggering the cards. The rules of the game as they are right now, say put one card above an, another, but it can be a real, you know, table hog because the cards are like four inches long. So I actually kind of stagger it to save space. I do like that the cards are large because you get to see the really pretty 
artwork on the cards. I, I just wish the date information was moved to the bottom so maybe I could stack the cards you know, more like that and really save space. But then you wouldn't see the art, so you know what you're going to do. Okay, anyway, when you successfully go here, uh, it automatically opens another location. So, all right, I've paid my Paradox card. I have uh, avoided paying a drop cost and a temporal cost. I've gone there. Now i got to roll for damage. Let's see what we got. Roll my two die. I have a 49 uh, 49 is not high enough, has to be 75 or above. That means I take two damage. So I would lose two of my health. However, I would gain the time fragment cube. That's one out of four. And I would gain one more um, uh, card, temporal card. Okay, so that turns over. I have my new location. Now at any time you can play any of your cards. I'm going to play two of the bandage cards in my hand. That's just going to give me two of my health right back. Looking good. Um, what else am I going to do? Now I am going to... I am going to go here, just for another example of what goes on. I'm going to go here. To go there, it says I have to get rid of two cards. I'm going to get rid of these two cards, my temporal charge and my fracture. Uh, I have to pay two temporal, or, uh, two temporal charges. I've traveled there, successfully traveling there, opens up another card which is in another progressive timeline. When you move between locations, you can only go forward in the timeline unless you play a loop card, and a loop card will let you go to any historical point, okay, any historical past points. I could go back there if I want and jump around. Otherwise, you're always moving forward. Okay, well, anyway, I open that. It opens this. I'm there. I got to roll for damage again. What do I got here? A 30. Man, I'm really good at rolling. Uh, so I did not break 75. I lose those two health again, but I do gain one more card. And that is a paradox. It lets me go somewhere for free. And I get the time fragment that's behind it. So I'm already two cards there. This is a pretty easy card. I'm going to play my paradox. The cost to go to the Independence Day is three cards and three temporal charges, but I'm down to five. I don't really want to use three. I'm going to use my card. I'm going to go there for free. Boom, successfully going there opens up another location, which will be further in the timeline, uh, and then the risk is 25. I'm probably going to beat that, and I did not. And then I take one more damage, okay, but I gain one more card, which is another Paradox card, and then I could go here, and then so on and so on. You just kind of push your way through. Okay, and that's literally how the game goes. Um, it, it's, it's, pretty, it's a very fast game. Um, you usually know where you want to go. I enjoy the lighthearted nature of it. I've been playing it, you know, while my TV's on in the background or, you know, uh, something where I didn't want to be swamped. Some nights I just don't want to be bogged down. And again, the art is engaging. The, the, the play is simple. You're going to know how it's going on, okay? And that's the uh, totality of Sojourn. Okay, so that is Sojourn. And Sojourn is, uh, is a fun time. Um, you're going to have a pretty good winning percentage at it, too. It's pretty joyous. Uh, it's the, uh, the, the kind of game you can play while the TV's on in the background. So give this game a look. It's coming to Kickstarter soon. Um, read more about it. See if it's for you, okay? All right, thanks, everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye. Say bye. All right. Talk to you later. See ya.